This is Seven National News and in your top story, the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has met with the French President Francois Hollande at the LEC Palace in the French capital. The meeting was held in the presence of Dubai Crown Prince, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum and Foreign Minister, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The UAE Vice President and President Hollande discussed a number of issues of mutual interest with focus on friendly and historical bilateral relations, which was founded by the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan al Nahyan, The two leaders also touched on expanding strategic relations between their respective countries, especially in terms of economic, military, cultural and humanitarian cooperation. They also discussed relig uh, regional issues, highlighting the importance of bolstering the foundations of stability, peace, freedom and justice to the people of the region. And following the meeting, the President of France praised Dubai's bid to host Expo 2020. Francois Hollande's remarks were contained in a statement issued by LSE Palace, stating that the President of the Republic reiterated its commitment to the strategic partnership between France and the United Arab Emirates, adding that the Head of State praised the advantages of the application of Dubai Expo 2020. The statement came after the UAE's ambassador in Paris said France had told him it would back Dubai's bid. The United Kingdom has already publicly pledged its support for Dubai's Expo bid and France is one of the 166 BIE member countries. Most of the delegates who will choose the winning bid in November are diplomats, many of which are based in Paris. With temperatures on the rise, the Ministry of Labour is implementing the summer midday break to protect workers and ensure they get ample rest. This is in an effort to prevent work and heat-related injuries. The break starts today and will run until the 15th of September. Between 12.30 p.m. and 3 p.m., workers performing jobs outdoors, such as in construction areas, will stop work for two and a half hours during the day. Keeping the break in mind, the Ministry of Labour said that daily work hours must not exceed eight hours in the morning or night shifts, and overtime should be paid to those working additional hours. Senior officials said that inspections will be carried out, and anyone found violating the midday break rules will face fines of 15,000 dirhams. In addition to this, the employer will pay 1,500 dirhams for each employee who is forced to work, and will not be able to employ new workers or issue new labor cards for three months. However, there will be exemptions to this rule, such as emergency repairs or projects. Good news for motorists in Sharjah. Very soon, the Emirates will have smooth-flowing traffic once the two major road projects, including the expansion of the most congested street, Al Aruba, is completed. The Department of Public Works is planning to expand Al Aruba Street by turning it into a free-flow highway with four lanes on each side. The main road passes through the center of the city and has the most commercial and business activity on both sides of the road. And according to a local daily, the project also includes includes replacing the existing Sharjah and Al Khaledia bridges with five-lane bridges as they face massive congestion. During a meeting held by DPW and other governmental departments, officials touched upon a number of projects, among them the expansion of, of Al Aruba Street from Al Marija Um Tarafa Bridge to the Al Khaledia area. The department is also planning the development of Al Jubail Market intersection and the construction of another bridge leading to the government department complex in Al Alaya among other developments. Meanwhile, General Mohammed Saif al zafin head of Dubai Traffic Police, clarified violations in emergency situations. According to a local paper, he pointed out that as per the federal law, a driver caught by radar for speeding must pay his fines. The same applies for those caught jumping a red light, which is one of the most dangerous of traffic violations. al zafin stated that during emergency situations, such as rushing an injured person to the hospital, the Dubai Traffic Police will study cases individually. They will determine and consider factors that force the driver to violate the regulations, provided relevant uh, documents are submitted and prove that the motorist had an emergency situation. 
After surveying more than 13,000 employees across the Middle East region, Aon Hewitt, an authority responsible for measuring and improving engagement to drive workforce performance, announced the best employers for 2013 on Thursday afternoon. The company scrutinized over 130 businesses, and according to the findings of the survey, the average levels of employee engagement in the Middle East are approximately 59%. However, companies rated as best to work for has a rate of 83%. ANU, its representatives, stated that members of staff of best employer companies enjoy their job and are positively invested in the long-term success of the business, unlike the general workforce. This year, three UAE-based companies proved that they were the best employers, with DHL Express UAE named the region's best employer, the second consecutive time it has featured in the awards. Microsoft Gulf followed closely in second place, and Procter & Gamble Near East came in at third place. We are happy to be this year as DHL. It's uh, having motivated people, highly engaged people. Those highly engaged people for sure deliver great service quality to our customers. And this great service quality then makes the customers loyal and at the end also um, delivers return to our shareholders. So this is, this is the circle. In order to have loyal and engaged uh, employees is a lot of work. A lot of programs, you got to have perfect HR processes, you need leaders which are honest, um, you need uh, all your systems to be, to be clear and transparent, and uh, it, it's a lot to explain, it's a lot of work, but it's great to be it. Considered to be a one-of-a-kind free-to-enter program, the study takes into account a number of key differentiators, such as an audit of HR processes, as well as interviews with the CEO and leadership team. One of the things that we realized is that uh, the demand was growing tremendously over the last year, just taking part in that study, so by 40%. 133 companies took part in it, and uh, some of the key trends are possibly to say that uh, people are thinking more in terms of engagement as being a business factor, because it really is an investment that you take, but it pays off business-wise if people are more engaged. Today, the Farjom Foundation announced details of their upcoming art camp, which gives children a chance to express their inner creative talents while learning from some of the finest works of art from the past. Now running for its second, for its fourth consecutive year rather, the summer program is based around artworks selected from Dr. Farhad Farjam's personal collection. Open to children between the ages of 7 to 10, the six-week summer program is ideal for those wishing to improve on their arts and crafts skills. Art Camp this year will explore the world of contemporary art and give children an insight about the most iconic artists of the 20th and 21st century. Inspired by these legendary artists, participants Participants will create their own artworks using a wide range of styles and techniques. At the end of the program, a special ex exhibition will be held to celebrate their achievements together with their families, leaders and newfound friends. Art Camp will take place at the Farjan Foundation in DIFC and will run from the 21st of July to the 29th of August, Sunday to Thursday from 9am to 1pm. We encourage uh, young children um, to come to these um, to this program, and actually we encourage parents uh, to register their uh, children because this is the unique opportunity that they they can they can benefit from. So this is the fourth year that um, Art Camp will be running at the Farjam Foundation. This year we're focusing on contemporary art from the Western world. We'll be featuring artists such as Keith Haring, um, Grayson Perry, and we're covering each medium. So this year what's different is the kids get to go through each medium, sculpture, pottery, painting, chalk pastel, and collage. So we hope to kind of offer that variety throughout the six weeks of camp. Uh, this year's theme is expressive education. So we hope that the kids not only will get to learn about these artists, but also learn enough to teach the other kids. So they'll be a part of the teaching as well as the learning this year. And finally, looking to other news now, French Spider-Man Alain Robert isn't short of invites on Towers to Climb. In July, he will be in Poland and then off to Paris. 
However, in between engagements, he will come to Dubai to study the Kayan Tower next month. The world's tallest tower, featuring a 90-degree twist, represents a new challenge for the real-life Spider-Man. This will be the first of its kind in his list of successfully scaled towers, which include more than 130 structures across the globe. In 2011, he climbed Dubai's Burj Khalifa, and according to Robert, now that he has the approval of Kayan Chairman, he wants to study this unique 75-story building and aims to climb it before the end of the year. He says he will study the structure and decide if he will climb it with or without a harness.